Is this a trap door here? Did you see this thing? Okay. It, there, it must be on a timer. Is that it? Okay. I would like to express my appreciation to Pastor Bob and uh, all of you for your kindness and attentiveness and the opportunity. <clears throat> Are we yeah. everything working? Okay. It's good to see some faces from, I think it was actually 18 years ago, probably, and, uh, and get to meet some new friends as well. I do want to give just a, a brief a conclusion to uh, the material that I have here for you. Probably no stewardship conference would be complete without reading this portion of Scripture. It is, of course, Matthew chapter 25, <clears throat> and this parable spoken by our Lord. <clears throat> For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several, or we would say his, his individual ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same, and made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. And after a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. <clears throat> He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant. Thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance." But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. <clears throat> May the Lord give his blessing to the reading of his word. I want to say just a couple of things here about this parable. We have here the duty and the reward of stewards. And I want to focus on those two things just very briefly before your digestion puts you to sleep. <clears throat> this 
parable by our Lord speaks, first of all, concerning the duty of stewards. And that is, in one word, faithfulness. Faithfulness. Paul writes to the Corinthians, It is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. That's the most basic duty. That is priority number one in your stewardship. Whatever God has given you to use for Him, whatever He enables you to do for His glory, be faithful. Be faithful. Be faithful at it for 40 years. I Thank the Lord. May the Lord give you 40 more, brother. <clears throat> The word faithful means dependable. And again, even non-Christian people recognize the value of this in an earthly way. Was it uh, Edison that said that the greatest ability is dependability? And I think we could make, in some ways, a biblical case for that in, in the Christian context. Faithfulness is trustworthiness. To be worthy of being trusted. Faithfulness implies consistency and even wisdom. Moses was a good steward before God, and we read that Moses was faithful in all his house, according to uh, Hebrews chapter 3. And faithfulness is the criteria on which we will be judged at the last day as far as our stewardship is concerned. Jesus says in Luke chapter 12, who then is that faithful and wise steward? And notice he puts the wisdom together with the faithfulness there. Who is the faithful and wise steward whom his Lord will make ruler over his household? And so it is required among stewards that a man, I think we can say a woman, be found faithful. It does not say that we're required to be rich or handsome. If that were the case, uh, some of us would be in some serious trouble. It doesn't say that it, uh, it is required in stewards that a man be brilliant and successful in the eyes of man, applauded, or even appreciated, but faithful. Faithful before the eyes of God. Brothers and sisters in Christ, success in our stewardship, in the eyes of our Master, is Faithfulness. Let me say just a few words also about the reward of stewards. There is a reckoning day coming as this parable speaks of. And we shall give an account of our stewardship unto God who has entrusted us with all that we are and all that we have as stewards. And according to this parable, some will hear him say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Every time I read that, I think of our dear old friend Weldon Frazier. He said to me once, I hope to hear it twice. Well done, well done. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure that he has heard that or shall on the judgment day. This is the commendation, the reward. We might say the praise that some will hear. Two of the three in this parable heard this, and it was the same in both cases. And that's interesting, of course, in itself. It's not a matter of how many talents or how much you are a steward over. It is the faithfulness with much or little that receives the same commendation 
from the Lord. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. <clears throat> Two things are mentioned here clearly as the reward of a faithful steward. First is added a talents in this case, or we would say added responsibilities, added service. And I personally take this to mean something in, in realms of glory. We will serve the Lord more in heaven than we ever have on this earth. And perhaps there's some correlation between our faithfulness on earth and whatever work the Lord has us to do for him in the life which is to come. I'll let Pastor Bob explain that to you. The other part that is mentioned here is perfect joy forever. Notice in each case, thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Increased service. Uh, we might say a promotion. Heaven will be a promotion of stewardship for us. And secondly, the joy of the Lord. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. The joy that Christ himself entered into when he ascended into heaven, he's going to share with those who have been faithful stewards on this earth. Can you imagine the joy of hearing him say, enter into my joy. Come to my joy. I'm sharing my joy with you. Oh, that, what more could we ask? What more could we imagine than that the Lord of glory should share his joy with us? And what brings him joy brings us joy forever and ever. But there is also in this parable mentioned a reward, we might say, for others, for those who are not faithful with what God has given them stewardship over and what they will hear is, Thou wicked and slothful servant, and cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. Well, this obviously is not a, a description of one who is a true believer. This is one who received many benefits from God and wasted and squandered and was, was not a faithful steward in any way. <clears throat> and he's called wicked and lazy, slothful. And his destination is a place of outer darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. And again, we have kind of two parts to this, this uh, judgment reward for unfaithful stewards. First is the loss of everything. Take therefore the talent for, uh, from him and give it unto him which hath ten talents. This man who received one ends up losing it. He hoards it and hides it and, and doesn't use it as it ought to have been used. And it's eventually taken away from him. And that's a picture of the ungodly, the lost, the, the unfaithful stewards Losing everything. And hell is a total loss of all. Of all that is good. Of all that is desirable. Of all that is godly. Loss of all common grace altogether. And secondly is instead of the perfect joy of heaven. The perfect torment. The perfect misery of the lake of fire where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. So the duty of stewards is to be faithful. The reward of a good steward is a promotion. We speak of sometimes of a person who, who dies in the Lord being promoted to be with Christ in heaven. That's very much in keeping with this parable. And the reward of unfaithful ones is 
the lake of fire. And that's a solemn note uh, to end on here. But it's where this parable ends. And so if you want to hear the well done, then you must be faithful. Faithful with all that God gives. He's given you, I trust, the gift of faith. Then believe Him, trust Him, serve Him, walk with Him. And whatever other gifts and graces, capacities, talents, opportunities, serve Him faithfully and you will hear the well done. Enter into the joy of thy Lord. And I'll close with this. In a sense, to the extent that we are unfaithful and we don't use the things that God has given us like we could and should, in a sense, we only hurt ourselves. Because God will accomplish His purposes. He uses means to accomplish His purposes, but from our limited human perspective, He will raise up someone else. And of course, it's all according to His decree, and we understand that, or we we don't understand it, but we believe it. But as far as our own personal involvement is concerned, who is hurt by unfaithfulness more than ourselves? We, we short ourselves. And yes, it, it is a grief and, and an offense to God. I don't mean to deny any of that. But the story is told of a man with a servant and the man wanted to make a long journey and he gives this servant a large sum of money and says, I want you to build me a house. When I return, I want to see this house finished. Well, this servant sees this big sum of money. He begins to think, there's a way that I could uh, pocket some of this for myself. And so uh, the master leaves town. And he begins to build the house. And uh, he begins to cut some corners and pocket some of the money. And uh, instead of building the foundation, uh, let's say, with uh, four inches of concrete, there's only three inches of concrete. And where there was a, needed to be a, a two-by-eight, uh, he put in a two by six and uh, instead of say uh, ten nails in this board there's only five nails in this board and so on and from the outside the house ended up looking just marvelous and perfect and he's got all of this money that he's been able to to skim off in his pocket well the master returned and began to take a tour of the house and looked it all over and everything looked really good. It just was was a well-built mansion. And the master says to the servant, you've been faithful to me for many years and hardworking, and I want to do you a favor. Here's the key to your new home. And by trying to help himself up front, the poor man only cheated himself. And there's a sense in which we are the losers if we're not faithful stewards. We need the experience. It's good for us. It is Christian privilege to serve the Lord. And so let's serve him, yes, for his sake, I don't mean to deny the centrality of that. But we are never the losers for serving Him and sacrificing whatever it is for Him and His sake and His glory. So, here's the question. What has God given you to use for Him? 
What do you have that you can put into service in some way for him? Use your imagination. Everyone can do something. You know, we are creatures of extremes. Sometimes we think we can do everything. And, oh, that's a terrible mistake. It's also a mistake to say, oh, I don't have any talent. I don't have any gifts. I, I, I can't do anything. No, the, the truth for all of us is somewhere in between. There's something you can do for the Lord. And let us all, by His grace, be faithful, serving Him as His stewards. Him who loved us and gave Himself for us. May God help us all to be good, faithful stewards. Let's pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for these days together. Thank you for the dear saints in Forest Hills Baptist Church. Thank you for the faithfulness of her dear pastor. Thank you for the testimony that continues on here in this generation. We pray, Father, that you would raise up a new generation to faithfully serve you. We pray that the things we've considered in your word would be burned into our hearts and that we would all be challenged to do all that we can while we can, while we have our faculties and while we have strength. Help us to be about your business. Watch over us all. Use us for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.